Good morning, and uh, uh, welcome to the live stream uh, of our Sunday morning worship service here at King City Bible Church. It's a, uh, it's a pleasure to once again uh, bring you the Word of God, and uh, I trust that uh, upon hearing the Word, uh, that it'll go straight to your heart, uh, make a difference there. In fact, uh, that's what it's meant to do. Now, the Word of God is meant to continually change us, transform us. Uh, we need to be drawn nearer to Him. We need to uh, have a, a Christ-likeness. Um, there should be a light uh, that shines from those uh, who uh, truly follow Him. And, uh, and it's really uh, uh, what we've been talking about these past weeks and what we'll uh, speak of uh, again uh, this morning in the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, just, a, just a note, uh, my wife and I uh, celebrated our, uh, our 23rd uh, wedding anniversary over this weekend, a touch of good news, and we're, uh, uh, it, was a, it was a nice time. As we were driving on, uh, on Highway uh, 68, uh, we saw uh, many signs uh, that were thanking the firefighters, it was just a wonderful reminder and a very wonderful gesture by the folks uh, in that community uh, expressing their thankfulness uh, for the difficult work uh, that the firefighters are doing. And uh, we express the same here. Uh, it was a great relief uh, to have the evacuation warnings lifted uh, the middle of this past week uh, for myself, my family, and uh, uh, the others here uh, in, in the Pine Canyon community. So uh, very grateful for the work that they're doing and for the work that they're continuing uh, to do uh, throughout the state. Uh, of course, our prayers go out to those who've, uh, uh, who've lost their homes, uh, who've lost property, uh, for those who are still uh, you know, very tensely just waiting um, perhaps uh, upon some of these wildfires that are approaching uh, their own homes, we pray for them. And uh, we want to continue to pray uh, for the firefighters and for the work that they're doing. Uh, we're thankful for the work uh, that, uh, that law enforcement and first responders are doing uh, during this time uh, out in our state. Uh, we certainly pray for others uh, who are uh, facing uh, uh, disasters as well, uh, the hurricanes uh, in the east, uh, those who've gone through it, uh, those who are bracing for more, uh, we certainly lift them up in prayer for them very much the same. Uh, there are those who are out there uh, working to protect uh, lives and properties of those who are being affected by uh, those storms and uh, we want to uh, we want to lift everyone up uh, in, in prayer this morning. Uh, so, uh, let's do that, and then we'll get into the Word of God and uh, see what He has for us uh, on this uh, Sunday morning. Uh, Lord, we do thank You, uh, your, uh, your on us. I, I remember, Lord, last Sunday, um, just that feeling, uh, just the, the very uh, tense and, uh, and anxious feeling, um, anticipating what could be. You know, the fires that could reach the community, the fires that could reach our homes. And, uh, and yet, uh, Lord, uh, your spirit uh, coming through uh, and the, the word of God was proclaimed that very morning. It's that same spirit, Lord, that I know it gives courage uh, to those who are feeling faint. Uh, it gives uh, strength uh, to those who are feeling weak. Lord, it's your spirit. You give uh, peace, Lord, uh, to those and comfort uh, to those who are just feeling uh, unrest and disquiet uh, in their hearts. Uh, so uh, I pray that you'd continue uh, to touch hearts in that way as only you can. I pray that those who know you and follow you will be uh, lights. Uh, in those dark moments and be able to shine forth and show uh, your, your love, your compassion, your kindness toward others, Lord, and uh, what a great and mighty thing uh, that is. Uh, I pray that in those moments of crisis that those of us who follow you would continue uh, 
to be those faithful servants and uh, continue to be those who carry your word, carry that light, and uh, truly uh, share that with others in order to make a difference in their lives. May our testimony, may the way that we respond uh, to those uh, moments of disaster, those, uh, those tense and anxious moments, Lord, uh, may they be a, a powerful testimony and witness to those uh, around us, Lord. Uh, Lord, continue to take care of us, Lord. Continue to take care of those who are working so hard uh, to help others, uh, Lord. We continue to pray for the firefighters in our state. We pray for those who've come from uh, many miles uh, to come and help them, and uh, we pray that you would uh, give them safety, that you would give them good health, uh, that you would help them, uh, give them the strength and the courage they need, and that the communities would continue uh, to pour out their thanksgiving and their love uh, for those uh, who are, are working really uh, for us, uh, working to help us to, for our lives of sake, uh, for the sake of our properties and, uh, and lands and so on. So we lift them up to you, Lord, and we pray for those who are uh, continuing to deal with the aftermath of storms in the east and perhaps bracing for, uh, for more, Lord. Uh, uh, just our hearts go out to them. And we just lift them up to you. And of course, Lord, we uh, always uh, can't forget that in the midst of all this, there's still this pandemic, uh, which is uh, more than simply an inconvenience to some. It's touched their lives physically. And, uh, you know, we, there's people who've, there are people who've lost their lives. There's people right now, Lord, this morning who are mourning for those who who've lost their lives uh, to this virus. And our hearts go out to them. Our prayers are for them, Lord. Uh, be with them. Wrap your arms around them. Bring them comfort. Bring them peace, Lord. Pray for those who are battling this, Lord. Uh, pray that you would uh, be with them. Be with those who are by their side. Be with the doctors. Be with the nurses, Lord. Help them. Please, uh, you know, bring that supernatural peace and strength. It only comes from you. I pray that all eyes, whether it be patient, or whether it be caregiver, whether it be loving family member, that all eyes would look to you for help. All eyes would look to you for security and peace and strength in these days. In Jesus' name, amen. And, uh, of course, may the Lord... Uh, be with us this morning uh, as we uh, look to his uh, word and uh, seek uh, to learn from it. Uh, may it be of a great benefit uh, to our hearts this morning. Uh, we're in the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, and uh, we will be uh, reading uh, verses 47 through 50. This is the parable of the net this morning. Uh, you may remember last week, uh, last week, Last week, that we were looking at the parable of the wheat and the weeds. So, uh, the parable of the net this morning, beginning in verse uh, 47 of Matthew uh, chapter 13. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets and threw the bad away. And this is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, may the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word uh, to our hearts this morning. You know, we've been uh, looking over these past weeks at the parables that the Lord Jesus taught that compare and contrast those who think that they've entered the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven and those who Jesus says actually uh, do enter, uh, those who actually are saved. Uh, and as we've looked, we've seen that it's uh, difficult at times to tell the difference, right? 
Uh, and you might recall a couple weeks back in the parable uh, of the ten virgins, uh, we saw ten virgins who all took their lamps and they all went seeking the bridegroom. And all of them, all ten, became drowsy and all fell asleep waiting for him. And then when the midnight cry rang out, all ten virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. But when the bridegroom came, only uh, five of the virgins were ready. They all had lamps, but only five of them had oil and were able to meet the bridegroom and to go with him to the wedding banquet. And the others, you might recall, they had to go and buy oil in, in the middle of the night, missing the bridegroom, and then being shut out of the banquet. And that parable taught us that a person can have a form of godliness, as the Word of God says, while the, you know, while the true reality of what it is to be a child of God is missing uh, from their lives. So uh, then last week we looked at the parable of the weeds and we saw that, again, the wheat and the weeds look nearly identical until it comes to harvest time. And we saw that uh, the, the devil sows his children in the midst of the kingdom of God. But we also said that it's not up to us to uh, divide the wheat from the weeds, but that God will actually do that through the Lord Jesus, who is the judge that he's appointed by raising him from the dead. And he's going to do that. He's going to divide them up through the Lord Jesus on the day of judgment. So it's not for, uh, it's not for somebody else uh, to tell you where you're at. It, it, it's not for you to, to, to look at another and, and to tell them you know, where they're at. But we do, as we spoke of last week, we do need to examine ourselves before God and to make sure that we are right with God. We need to make sure that we are truly in the faith. Uh, and this morning, uh, as I just read a few moments ago, uh, we're looking at the parable of the net, which is really essentially the same message. Uh, Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like a net. Um, you know, different, uh, different kinds of nets were used for fishing. Uh, you know, the, when you think of the casting nets uh, that, were, uh, that were employed by Simon Peter and Andrew on the Sea of Galilee back in uh, the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, uh, those nets, those were thought to have a very narrow end pulled by the uh, boat and then a wide uh, end that was uh, sunk by weights. You know, the, the, the nets were probably uh, made of uh, ropes or uh, cords uh, woven from uh, flax, uh, papyrus, or hemp. Uh, the fishermen would look for a very uh, specific point where they thought the fish were, and then they would cast the net out. Uh, you know, there was a weight that fell over the fish, and then the fish, and when the fisherman just pulled a cord, it closed over the fish. But the net to which Jesus was referring to was not a casting net. What Jesus was referring to was a drag net. And drag nets were much, much larger than, uh, than the fishing nets that were used by, by Peter and Andrew. You know, drag nets had floats on top, sinkers on the bottom to keep one part of the, uh, uh, of the wide end of the net at the surface, while the other part dragged below catching uh, fish there in the same. Uh, a drag net is a, is a net that catches everything before it and allows nothing to escape. And that's really important 
to our understanding of what's being spoken of here this morning. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. My understanding from, uh, from study is that there were at least 18 species of indigenous fish uh, to the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus is saying to these people, and some of these people were seasoned fishermen, and he's saying to these people that the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that draws everything with it, some fish of every kind. You know, this illustration shows us that the kingdom of heaven, it picks up all kinds. And we saw that there, all kinds of fish there within the sea. You know, when, when Jesus called Simon uh, and Andrew on the lake, he said, come, follow me, and I'll send you out to fish for people. You know, now he never gave any guarantee about what type of people the net would draw in, right? You know, the, the wheat and the weeds, you remember from last week, the wheat and the weeds, they grew together. And it's not until harvest time that they're distinguished and they're separated. So the kingdom of God is like a dragnet. It brings all kinds of different fish in, but there's no guarantee that all of them will be God's children. And I hope that makes sense to us this morning. It's very similar to what we were talking about last week. Now, of course, in general, you know, there's, there's a great variety in humanity. Amen. Right? You know, the, the, the Great Commission is to go into all the world and to preach the gospel and to make disciples of all nations, all the people of the world. Uh, but, you know, there are just, there's so many different kinds of people, people of different gender, people of different age, people of different nationality, class, culture, language, and on and on and on. You know, there's just so many. And Jesus is saying that the kingdom of heaven will drag in all kinds of people like that. But in the end, there's only one division that's ultimately important, is what's being said there. You know, the different kinds of fish are mixed in this dragnet, and you can't tell the difference. But when it's dragged to the shore by the fishermen, they sit down and they sort them out, is what the parable was, was saying, right? And they put the good fish into the baskets, and then they throw away uh, the bad fish. And this probably... Uh, refers, uh, at least in part, to uh, Leviticus uh, chapter 11, uh, beginning in verse 9 and continuing through verse 12, where it says, Of all the creatures living in the waters of the seas and the streams, you may eat any that have fins and scales, but all creatures in the sea or streams that do not have fins or, and scales whether uh, among all the swarming things or among all the other living creatures in the water, you are to regard as unclean. And since you're to regard them as unclean, you must not eat their meat. You must regard their carcasses as unclean. Anything living in the water that does not have fins and scales is to be regarded as unclean by you. Again, from Leviticus chapter 11, verses 9 through 12. But what the Lord is saying here is that there are many kinds of fish that will appear to enter the kingdom of heaven, but this is the only distinction and the only division that really matters, and, and only the judgment in the last day will bring all of this to light. Uh, that's what's, so Jesus says, and, and these are very sobering words, just as we read the sobering words uh, at the end of the parable last week, but he, he reads the, these words, uh, we read these words in verses 49 and 50, 
uh, of Matthew chapter 13. That this is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come. They will separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace uh, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And uh, friends, my, uh, my great hope uh, is that the Holy Spirit would, would just bring very clearly and very heavily to anyone who's not right with God this morning, just the importance of what it is to stand at the judgment without Christ. It's something that just needs to be considered for those who don't truly know him today. Um, now, you, you might be... Uh, you might be wondering as we as we go through this this morning. Well, you know why, why did why did the Lord Jesus tell this parable at all? I mean, after all, I mean, it's essentially the same as what we were looking at last week. You know, the wheat and the weeds. You know, we, we, you know, it's just with you know with different figures being used in, in in the analogy. But there are some differences, right? There are some, you know, one is that in the parable of the weeds, there's, um, you know, there's that one sower of the weed, <clears throat> speaking of the seed, not the sower of the weed, I'm sorry, but the sower of the seed, boy, you, you don't want to get caught in that, right? But the sower of the seed, and that, it, of course, is speaking of Christ, and he's sowing his children in the world, but here we find fishermen operating one of these dragnets, so... Uh, we see the correlation then between uh, the Lord Jesus, who's the one who's given us uh, the gospel, but we are to be his fishermen and to go. Uh, you know, we work in conjunction with him and we cooperate with him, engaged as workers together with God as he calls us to fish for his people. You be fishermen of men. Also, uh, in the parable of the weeds, uh, there were uh, only the wheat and the weeds. You know, there were two different kinds of crop. But as we see in this parable, there are many fish, many kinds, uh, that are gathered into this net. Now, you know, having said that, there, there's nothing obviously... Uh, distinctive about this parable so you know you might still be asking why why did he tell it at all you know he, he told it friends for emphasis you know he, he repeated the same message with different illustrations because the message was just that important. Friends, we need to get a hold of that this morning. The message was what was important here. Different illustrations, but it was to get the message. He uses different illustrations and figures so that we might realize that this is what's going to be characteristic of the age in which we live. You know, that's what this parable is about. That moment, this moment between Christ's ascension to heaven and the giving of the Holy Spirit, the, the great commission across the whole earth, the spreading of the gospel just before Jesus comes and judges the world. You know, this is the kingdom of heaven now. And we just, we need to get ready for them to make sure that we're not cast away as bad fish, you know, it, you know, it, it not only reveals uh, the urgency of the hour, but the character of Christ. It, it reveals, it reveals the heart of Christ. It reveals His compassion, friends. He essentially tells us the same message twice 
because he wants us to know that we are in the faith. He wants us to be sure, absolutely secure in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the Lord repeats this because he wants us to be warned that, yes, there is a judgment and we need to ensure that we're saved and that we're secure in Jesus Christ. The, the message is that judgment will differentiate. That's what's going to happen. You know, friends, don't be someone who takes a chance. You know, and we hear of people, you know, sometimes they even speak it. Some, you know, many don't. Some actually speak it, that they're willing to take the chance. They're willing to gamble with that. But, you know, are, are you going to wait until that day to see which side you're on? You know, to see, you know, why would you wait till that very day? Day to see which type of fish you are you know would you wait until then and, and what about others you know what we're told in the Word of God is that we are meant to call people as Jesus did to look at to the, really to themselves and to ask you know do I know that I'm born again do I have a, a personal dynamic relationship with Jesus Christ or am I just lumped in with the whole net right am I, am I, I you know am I am I just lumped in with all the, the others only to be discovered on judgment day as a counterfeit friends please don't 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 put yourself there all right please you know there there is an absolute urgency you know, to these messages. Um, I want you to consider this. And I, 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 I know uh, that I've talked about this before because this is something that strikes me. And whenever I think about it, I just, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, just one, it's just one of those things that grabs you. Friends, I want you to consider this morning Judas Iscariot. Just Judas had heard the words of Christ. He had heard the teachings of Jesus Christ. He, this is a man who heard, among the others, this is a man who heard the Sermon on the Mount. He heard the, 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 the messages of the Beatitudes. The, he heard the parables. He heard the Lord's Prayer. And after uh, in those moments after the, the multitudes went, he was among those who was in the private gathering of the disciples who received extra teaching. In those twilight hours, he was there among them, and yet he never truly believed or knew Christ by faith. He knew Christ personally, absolutely, but he didn't know him in a saving manner. And that it's just astonishing. You know, he, he, this is a man, Judas Iscariot, saw the miracles of Jesus. And then yet, and we've talked about the greatest miracle of all, the new birth, right? That, that, you know, he, he, that's something he hadn't known. Judas, he, he heard the words of Christ and he saw the miracles of Christ Friends, he saw Christ save others. He saw it with his own eyes. You know, Judas saw lives changed. Judas, along with the other disciples, saw lives absolutely transformed by Christ. Judas was in the middle of a revival. I mean, but even in the midst of all of that, he remained unchanged. Are you grabbing this, friends? It blows me away whenever I think of it. It's just, uh, you know, he remained unchanged in the midst of all this, and no one knew. No one knew. I mean, Christ knew, but no one, no one, none of the other disciples knew. He did Christ's 
work himself. He was with the other disciples, spreading the gospel of the kingdom. He was sent out with the twelve. Judas was among them, preaching the message, doing great works, and yet the, the, very, the greatest work of all. It just hadn't happened in his own heart. You know, uh, uh, if we were to go back to uh, chapter 7 uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, I want to read verses 21 through 23 of Matthew chapter 7. And uh, we have, uh, I've used uh, this particular portion uh, over these past weeks. So it should summon it right to mind. Uh, not everyone. Uh, who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not uh, prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Friends, you couldn't have told the difference between Judas and the other disciples. Not one of the disciples had a notion. Even when the Lord Jesus uh, uh, appears to single him out on that very night, in which he was betrayed, they, didn't, they, did, they couldn't even conceive that it was possible. Only Christ knew. Oh, did Judas know himself? Of course he did. You know, different kinds of people enter the kingdom of God Some people enter the kingdom of God as tourists. You know, they, they, uh, they enjoy what's offered among the people of God. Uh, but there's no commitment in their heart. You know, they, you know, they, maybe they're people who, uh, in the past, when we were able to have such things, Maybe they enjoyed going to Christian events, right? Maybe, you know, they just enjoy Christian company. You know, the company of believers. You know, the, the, the whole atmosphere of the kingdom of God appeals to them, right? They sample maybe, you know, maybe they... You know, over these years, they've sampled a, a variety of churches. Maybe they even, maybe they even went out to, you know, different uh, events, conferences, concerts, organization, you know, so on and whatever. But they're still citizens of the world. And in that sense, they're only tourists. Then uh, some people uh, like the kingdom of God so much that they actually become residents. You know, God. You know, they, they enjoy all the benefits of residence. You know, they they do the things that real citizens do. They may even look and. They may even sound like citizens of heaven, you know, uh, but they're still citizens of the world. They're not committed to the kingdom, nor are they committed to the king. Uh, you know, Jesus says, if you're like that, on the judgment day, when you try to claim the rights of kingdom citizenship, you'll be thrown out. So, the, 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 the vital question is really, again, it's a very sobering one. You know, what is your status in the kingdom of God? 
the kingdom of heaven draws all kinds in, like we see in our parable this morning. Are you a tourist? Are you a resident? Or are you truly a citizen? Because if you're simply a tourist and like the atmosphere, or if you're a resident that likes to live and work and enjoy the benefits without any full allegiance of heart, at the end, the king of the kingdom is going to say those words. I never knew you. I never knew you. So then, you know, what is it to know that you're in the kingdom and that you're secure? Well, friends, it's the same it's the same message. I've, heard, I've said these words again and again because it comes straight from the Word of God. You know, this is the Word of God to us and to, to all of us. We need to repent of our sins. We have to. You know, there, there needs to be a change of mind and there needs to be a change of heart to realize that it's your sin that uh, is, you know, that condemns you there before God and that you're going to be judged for your sin if you don't turn from it and turn to Jesus. You know, you know, you, you don't, you don't have, none of us have the power in and of ourselves, none of us have that power to get rid of the sin in our lives, in and of ourselves. We can't draw up that strength and that power ourselves to get rid of all that mess, all that sin in our lives. God will do that. God will do that, but but you and I, we have to have the willingness and the heart to turn. I hope that makes sense to us this morning. You turn from your sin and your selfishness and this world and you turn to Jesus who died on the cross to save you, to save us all from sin and absolutely the very sins uh, that you and I would try to to hide and to secretly enjoy. He came to save us. He died on the cross to save us from those sins. Those sins that you try to hide away. No one else knows. You know, you've done a good job. But he knows. He knows. Jesus died for those. Jesus died for those sins. It just it's so important that we he he bore your sins and my sins on the cross, taking our sins on himself and giving us in faith, you know, if we have that true faith in him, he gives us his goodness, his righteousness, his cleansing. You know, he, he, friends, he wants you. He absolutely wants you to be born again. I mean, you know, he wants your heart to be changed. He wants to start cleaning you from the inside out. He wants to come in and he wants to live within you. And he wants not only to live in you, but to live through you. <laughs> you know, it, it, the, the, the assurance comes when you have that adoption as sons and daughters of the living God. And his spirit testifies and confirms with your spirit that you are a child of God. And friends, there will be signs of life. There will be signs of life. You know, 
friends, if you're if you're if you're just making and only making a profession of Jesus Christ, and there's nothing at all in your life that portrays his life or or his fruit, you need to just you, you need to you need to look down and you need to carefully look at the foundation. You need to check that foundation, friends. All right? And as we, uh, we're, we're getting ready to close this morning, I want, I want you to hear this, friends. In Matthew uh, chapter 7 again, back in Matthew chapter 7, beginning in verse 24, uh, Jesus speaks of two foundations. And again, the image is uh, of the day of judgment. And he said, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. You know, friends, uh, when... Uh, When the storm comes and, and just beats and just batters your life, you know, it, it's only those who've built their house on the rock that will endure. I mean, that's it. Jesus saying, Jesus saying to, to you, to me this morning, he's saying, the rock is my truth. The rock is my life. The rock is my words. That's the foundation. You know, the rock, he's saying, is my heart. Friends, if you build your life on what he says, and it's really his words to us. You know, he, he's saying, if, if you build your life on, uh, on, on, on what I say, Jesus says, and, and if you believe it, and if you step out in faith upon it, then you'll be on the rock, you'll be secure, you'll have no doubt, and you'll know that, that on that great day that you're safe and that you're secure. So friends, take a look. L look at that foundation, friends, today. Don't wait. Just look at that foundation that you're standing on today. You want to be on the rock, and the rock is, is his life. It's his truth. It's his word. It's his heart. And that's what we're meant to be on. For that will give us the safety and security on that great day. I don't know when that day is coming. I know, even in the, even in the words that I'm reading um, you know, in the Gospels this morning, you know, I know. There's nothing to say. We can't look around. We, we don't know when he's coming. We don't know the day or the hour. But I can guarantee you that he's coming. The Bible says so. So, be ready. Don't wait. Just, just check. Don't wait until the last moments. You know, don't wait until that great day comes to understand that you just might be lumped in with the other fish in that net. But you turn out to be a counterfeit and you're tossed aside. Don't wait until that great day to suddenly be awoken, you know, in the middle of the night, not ready. No oil, 
no life, no spirit. And then you're shut out of the wedding banquet. Don't wait until that great day. You know, to be, only be discovered to be so that someone else, a child, not of God, but even perhaps of the enemy. And you've been making your way fine. It's been working out. No one knew until the harvest. And then, and then comes a separation. Don't, friends, what I'm saying through all of these, what the word of God is saying, don't wait. Don't wait. Yeah, there's an urgency. But all of these messages, too, are pointing us to our God who loves us. That's what they're there for, to show us. We're meant to be his. He wants us to be his. He wants us to be citizens of the kingdom. We want to know, the, we have to know the king of the kingdom, friends. We have to. So, uh, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll, uh, we'll close this morning. Would you, uh, would you join me, friends, in prayer today? Lord, uh, Lord, thank you for your word. I, um, I, I pray that I've been a, I've been a clear messenger of, uh, of your word this morning because it's just so important. I just, these messages, Lord, I just, they're, I pray that folks would know the, the, and sense the urgency of it. It's true, Lord, that I know we don't know the day, we don't know the hour, but there's going to be a time when that, when that cry comes out. You know, the master's coming. We need to be ready, Lord. You know, we, we need to have the assurance that we belong to you, that we are sons and daughters, adopted sons and daughters in the family, in the kingdom. You know, there's, 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 you, your spirit, Lord, testifies, confirming with our spirit that, you know, that we're yours, that we truly belong to you. Lord, if we know, Judas knew. Uh, if we know, I mean, we could be going along, you know, all, I think it's one of the, the, the most powerful things we, we could go along, Lord. No one would know, but we would know that we're truly not yours. We could see it all. Uh, Lord, we, we could even be those who just feel comfortable in the atmosphere, but we just... But there has to be that allegiance, Lord. There has to be the, the following and the obedience to trust and obey. For there's no other way, Lord. We just, I just, I pray, Lord, that people would truly know your love for them, your compassion, your kindness for them. And if they haven't made those real, genuine steps, that they, that they would. Look, I can't know others' hearts just as others can't know my heart. And, you know, there's things our hearts will reveal, of course, but, you know, we, But you know us inside out, Lord. You know us. And I, I pray that you would that you would help us to examine ourselves, examine our hearts, truly, truly look. Give us the eyes to see, Lord, and give us the ears to hear what you have for us, Lord. Expose the things that, needs to be, that need to be exposed, that need to be brought out into the light. pray, Lord, that we would be a people who would repent, continue
continually turn from those sins, turn away from a lifestyle, from the habitual sins in our lives, and turn to you. Take the change and the transformation that comes from knowing you, following you, being obedient to you. And then watching as you, as you live through us and we see other lives transformed. I, uh, I pray that each and every one of us will, will be on that solid foundation. Foundation that, that is your word, your life, your heart. You. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace, friends.